Welcome folks to another JB's Man Cave road trip. Usually in these road trips I play music but this time I've decided to comment. I've been getting a lot of feedback that I should comment more and really I don't like the sound of my voice and neither do I think I could ramble for a whole road trip but I'm gonna try it in this rounds mostly because I'm familiar with this area. Right now we're in Bayshore this is in the west. Now a lot of these areas I grew up in as a kid and some as a teenager and it was a lot different. One thing I like about some of these areas is they try to keep the vegetation, the trees. It's just a lot of green. I love green. I hate to see all this concrete. Um, when I was on a mission in England and then I came back a lot of everything here was the same but then when I went to the USA and I came back I saw these huge towers and that just amazed me I couldn't believe the people in the area would want such tall buildings around them. I remember when I was a kid you could actually come to the shoreline here. Now we can't actually go around this area. It's private property so we're gonna stay to the public roads. A lot of this area is supposed to be what many in Trinidad would consider the well-to-do. But in many areas, many cases, if you compare this to the states or elsewhere, the area is just, you know, plain. But the cost of properties in Trinidad and Tobago is so ridiculous that any kind of area that seems to be nice just goes up. Uh, most of the houses here when I was a child was flat houses. They didn't, weren't two-story and uh, they didn't have all these humps thanks to crazy drivers there are humps every two seconds a lot of this road used to um you know come out with your bike ride a lot of my friends i would meet here and there was, well there still is a place for boats there that you could also access. But you notice that big fence in the background there? I notice a lot of the west is like that now. You just can't access the roads. I don't know if that's a cut down on traffic or what, but it used to be that you could pass all these areas with no problem. I should also mention that back in the day, Areas like this were not astronomically expensive. I mean, they were expensive for the day, but they weren't beyond the reach of people. I mean, only the really wealthy can afford these multi-million dollar houses. Now, when I say multi-million dollar, I'm talking about in TT dollars. Because, you know, somebody from abroad looking at this may not see multi-million dollar in their mind unfortunately with um, when I'm driving into the Sun you get a lot of shadows but as I turn you'll notice those shadows disappear it gets more colorful and no matter where you go there's always some kind of road issue. Flooding, potholes, what have you. You see all those trees are in the middle of the road? I just love that. I think more places in Trinidad should have trees in the middle like that. Just makes the area more welcoming. Brings you closer to nature, 
Make sure you're appealing overall. That hill or mountain on the in the background to the left, that's Goodwood Park. We won't be able to go there in this road trip because it's blocked off. It's now gated. Again, in my young years, you could access those places easily. There weren't security guards or gates or any of those things, but there's a lot of that now. We can thank crime and criminals for that aspect. One thing I used to see a lot too when I was younger is coconut trees. Now you can see a few in the video here, here and there, but not a lot. I mean, if you saw the scene, nobody would be readily able to tell you, oh, this, this is a tropical island. No, they would have to wonder where it is. I really miss the coconut trees. You can only see that when you go to a Manzanilla. There shouldn't be. Alright, so... Where there's dentistry and subway places, that used to be a big pharmacy. An oval pharmacy. I don't know how many of you remember that. And there used to be a grocery there. Not so fancy like it is now. In those days it was called Hilo, now it's called Massey. One thing I don't like about the West is the one road, the Western Main Road, in and out to get to Karanaj and Shagaramas. There should be more ways to access there. Now we're going to turn right. And this is the other side of Bayshore that I wasn't able to get to because of the gate. I'm just going to show it to you. I can't go very far because everything's blocked up now. Even that green fence or that gate on the left, that was not there before. Everything's just blocked off. You could actually go straight down that way um, and access the boats. Again, blocked off. And I notice a lot of people like to use palms, like that's what you're seeing in front of you now, instead of coconut trees. I guess they don't want the coconuts dropping on their cars or whatever, but again, I would love to see more coconuts, coconut trees. Ahead is Glencoe. I believe I have a video on that, in that area. If not, I'll have to do one, but... Um, <coughs> We're not covering that today, but that's Glencoe. We're continuing on the Western Main Road, heading east. That's the Yacht Club on the right. We're just passing it. And this road that's coming up here, you used to be able to turn right and access that. But again, it's blocked off and has a gate on it. That's Goodwood Park on the left. And it used to be that you could turn onto the crescent right there and access it, but you can't. They've gated it off. And the, the, when I was a kid, they didn't have all that shrubs and trees on the left. There's a tennis court inside of there, and you could be able to access it um, and access the grounds, but no more. So on the right is Westmorans by the sea, and on the left is Westmorans north. And we're going to go on the north side first. And as you can see, the roads here are not all that great, despite being a quote-unquote fancy area. The houses are not bad looking, though. I like the Spanish designs, the modern designs. And again, I like the green. I love that 
flowering plant. Forgot, forgot the name of it off my head. It's Bougainvillea, I think. I purposely went close to it to get a good shot of it. Ah, there's a coconut tree in the distance, on the top. Somebody keeping the Caribbean aspect. And another thing I love about Trinidad is the mountains in the back. Just love to see the mountains. That's something you don't see much of if you go to the central or south or even east. It's all in the north. I don't know the cost of some of these houses here, but I can promise you they are millions of dollars. Even those towns houses that we're passing right now on the right, maybe one of those would go for two or three million TT. That's about uh, a little less than 500,000 US. That's St. Anthony's College on the right. We're passing. To cover um, all of West Morans, we need to go up to this part here. Let's drive through it. Goodwood Gardens. It's a residential area. I would dare see the houses in here a little bit more affordable, not as fancy. One or two of them are, but not not all. One thing that is unique about sub the suburbs in Trinidad is you could go to an area and one house might be really well kept beautiful a lot of architectural design whatever and then the house next to it could be you know not taken care of grasses growing weeds is growing no paint you know almost like a derelict that's something that I never understand about house owners so let me know how you think what you think about me commenting I know I have a boring voice a not very enthusiastic voice but hey I'm talking I'm let you know what my thoughts are about what I'm seeing what you are seeing now when we turn right um, here we we'll come out and then we will turn left ahead is a church Catholic Church quite popular with people in the area when I was a kid those apartments on the left weren't there either alright so we are heading still in West Morris North Heading into the other part of it in the residential area. That's St. Anthony's College and their pool, their grounds. Look at those cloud formations above. Very interesting.
Alright, so we're gonna turn into one of these streets. Here the houses are uh, bigger. A little more fancy, quote unquote. It just gives you an idea of the area. And as you can see, no matter where you go, bad roads. Properties that are not kept. You saw that empty lot on the right we just passed. Now ahead and past that green is, I believe, the Dago Martin River. Goes out to the sea. And some coconut trees for a change. These are very quiet areas. Not a lot of noise, people walking up and down, limers and that sort of thing. Just don't exist here. One thing I love about Trinidad too is the variety of flora and fauna. The many different kinds of trees, pine trees, coconut trees, palm trees, fruit trees. I don't know if you can tell but locally we use a grass, we refer to it as razor grass. Abroad they use golf grass, golf in green. The kind of grass we have here, if you don't cut it and maintain it, it goes crazy very quickly. Looks like somebody needs to pick up the trash, just to the max. So local private school, Don Ross I believe it is. So as I'm making this video, um, let me tell you what's going on in Trinidad. Of course we're in a worldwide pandemic. You can't access the beaches. At least when I was making this video, you couldn't access the beach at all. Now, or most recently they made it so that you can access the beach, but only from 5 a.m to 12 o'clock noon and in many cases so many people rush to the beach to get into that period that time period that the police will sometimes come and close it down so imagine we're in a tropical island you can't access the beach as you'd like many other places are also closed There isn't much restaurant dining. There are a few restaurants that do it, but most food places is takeout. So we're continuing driving here in Westmorland. You know those youtubers who talk and talk and talk and talk for hours i just don't know how they do it i'm at a loss sometimes of what to say to you guys and you see the thing is i don't want to go political i know some of you all love that but i don't want to bring politics into this channel i address issues that i feel are important People say when you're addressing issues, you're addressing some political angle. No, it doesn't matter what political alliance you have, an issue is an issue. Once it affects people, it needs to be solved. The 
there's always a lot of private security driving on driving around here not sure how effective they are but you always see them and the background on the mountain that's good at park there's some really big houses up there We'll, we'll stay humble here at 10 West Morris. We can access the. Or at least I don't know if I can. If they consider their public access route still. I will need to find out about that. Because there's a, a lot of nice views up there. For those of you who are abroad and lived in West Morins at some point in your life then this may be an interesting watch see what it looks like now this is how it looks in 2020 I don't know how long ago you left Trinidad. Some of my viewers will say they've been, they haven't been to Trinidad for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. For those people who haven't been here for at least 30 years, I'm sure everything just looks a lot different. One thing I have to do is get a better seat to sit down and talk this long. You need to have a really comfy seat. And my seal seat is like hard. Something you'll see in all of these areas too is those guard boots like that one we're passing on the right. But they aren't maintained. I don't know if it's that they couldn't afford it somebody wasn't paying or maybe they they in a wrong the residents in a roundabout we tried to make it a gated community but wasn't allowed to i i believe the residents of west Morans, both north west Morans and west Morans by the sea um Probably the people in Bayshore, I'm not sure, have been trying to make it gated so it's not accessible by the public. But I, they just haven't succeeded. And in our case, watching this video, that's a good thing. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to pick up these areas. But who knows? One day they may succeed in making it gated and these videos will be invaluable to see what the area is like that mountain on the background the part that rises from the ground that's cookery that area those mountains go into Pitti Valley and Dago Martin I think we more or less covered this part so at some point I'm gonna turn left and then we're gonna go to West Marines by the sea now this area here is pretty set it's old and when I say old it's been around since I was a kid and I'm old um, but West Morans by the sea is a little newer when I was a child we lived there when it was now starting to be a development it wasn't a big deal as most people see it now in fact a lot of people didn't want to live there um, 
because the concept of townhouses wasn't an ideal situation for Trinis back then. But you could say West Moines really re revolutionized um, townhouses, in my opinion, um, by just making a lot of them. Most trainees like the, you know their own house, their own space, their yard. But when you have townhouses, you don't have much of that. Just you know, everybody's kind of compact. And despite being townhouses and compact, those townhouses go for a lot of money. So we're gonna cross the Western Main Road, and we're gonna head into West Morans by the sea. If you like JB Man Cave and you like the videos that I take the time to make for you all, feel free to become a patron. You don't have to support all the time, but you know our co your contribution is well appreciated. It means a lot to know that somebody thinks that what I do is good enough that they're willing to contribute it. Now this road here. When I was a kid, none of these houses was here. This was all open land, filled land. And it would extend all the way to the end to the ocean. So as a kid, I used to run all here. Um, it was just rubble, shrubs here and there. And you could go all the way to the ocean. I used to have a ball. Now it's good for running and walking. Sometimes I come here to take a run. There isn't as much traffic. Friendly people. And you can see a lot of townhouses on the right. The roads here are okay maintained to some degree this road we're on it makes a whole loop through West Moines by the sea and that loop is around a mile give or take and you'll see it turns here and goes back down eventually but on the right used to be the ocean line you can't see it because all these huge houses are blocking they're blocking it but the ocean is right there too bad we can't see it Again, that's the funny thing about living on a tropical island. You really can't see the ocean most of the time. There isn't much by way of the infrastructure or whatever to make it appealing to see the ocean or be near the ocean. All you see really in these areas is concrete and paved roads. It's really sad. Now this part of West Morris is considered family oriented. Lots of children, families, young couples. And you know, I just don't know why more areas can can't be like this. And when I say be like this I mean maintained like this. I don't really see it as a big deal really. I mean the houses aren't incredibly fancy or somehow overly special or whatever. They're just you know regular houses but the people just maintain it and I don't know why other areas can't be like that. Just maintain your houses, paint it, 
keep it in good order. The other thing about Westmorans, as nice as the people are generally friendly. I don't know what's been your experience. Maybe you have something to comment otherwise. But if you do, please keep it clean. I get lots of comments sometimes, and some of them, unfortunately, I just can't approve. Especially the ones that sort of go down with race or politics or, you know, insulting something or somebody in the scene video. I mean, nah, that's not. That's not what JB Man Cave is about. I am just capturing life for you, sharing some thoughts about humanity. And that's it. Nature, life, you know, I'm not here to judge people, insult people. However, I do touch on issues that I think are very important. If something is to me ridiculous I will address it so long as I'm not going down the road of politics because with politics everything is almost ridiculous anyway we're going towards the older if I can call it older part of West Morris. this is the part that was here before all those townhouses was built this will also take you towards Bisho Regent's Tower, which is what we're passing on the right, was not there either when I was a kid. These townhouses on the right have been here for a long time. Now, this road uh, used to be accessible to get, you know, you could drive straight through and get to um, almost to Glencoe. But I see they have blocked it off. And something that might be unfamiliar for a lot of foreigners is you will notice the walls. We use a lot of gates and walls here, high walls. Abroad they tend to, you tend to have access to the house from the road. But that, not in Trinidad. I don't know if you can see it, but something else that I notice in these areas that, um, and other areas too, is a lot of cameras. And I can't blame them. Just you get so much of the criminal element has taken over Trinidad. It's almost like everywhere you have to be looking over your shoulder. You can see those twin towers in the background. This camera, you know, doesn't do it justice, but those things are huge. I used to love to come biking through these areas. Some of these houses are as old or older th than I am. Because this side of West Morins has been here for a long time. You know, they may have been renovated or whatever, but the original structures the original plots of land have all remained the same and you're gonna see where we are going to bend this corner and use it used to be that you could go straight to the main road the western main road there but as you can see there's a huge gate and we are gonna have to turn around
before people decided to put these huge walls sometimes you used to be able to peek at the sea through you know they used to have different gates and stuff not all these high walls and you could see through the gate and through the back of the house you would see the ocean because we're right near to the ocean right now but you just can't tell because all you see now in Trinidad is concrete if you want to see the ocean you have to actually go on the mountain and look out or actually drive to a beach and that's another thing about Trinidad I just don't understand is the amount of beaches we have so little so few places to actually access a proper beach and we're on a tropical island there should be beaches everywhere at every turn not only for tourism but just as a place to access for people to relieve their stress to be with their family to relax be part of nature we shouldn't have to be driving all the way to Maracas or Las Cuevas or Tyreco or one of those beaches. We, you know, we should be able to do it within five minutes beat it beach, no matter where we are in Trinidad. But I have never come in to think about it, ever heard people complain about that. They just seem to accept that when you want to go to the beach, you have to drive to those areas. And even the areas that have been designated as beaches, they're getting smaller and smaller. Like for instance, when the um, CDA, the Chagramas Development Authority took over, they started to make quote-unquote fancy areas out of beach coastline that have now been taken over by private organizations and the CDA themselves and so you can't access it a lot of shagramas used to be accessible to beach goers and you can't anymore I just don't understand it All right, so we're still in Westmorans. We're going to turn on one of these streets, and you're going to see that we can't go all the way down the street either. It has a gate near the end, just in the area where it has the ocean. They have locked it off I just don't get it I don't not that I don't get why they blocked it off I mean if I was living in this area I wouldn't want people walking up and down either but I mean just being able to access the ocean see the ocean is something I just don't get there's just few places you can go unless like I said you drive up the mountain so you see so many houses here are nice some are not so nice And you see the gate there on the left. I had to turn around, I couldn't drive anymore. But in turning around, you get to see more some of the houses, I guess, the way they're designed. But you know, honestly looking at this, I'm thinking, you know, a lot of these people paid a lot of money for these properties, huh? but they all seem kind of compact, don't you think so? The house is very close to the road 
and very close to one another I mean well in the case of abroad when you see a, a truly wealthy person their house and their grounds well the house could, could be big or the same size as these but you know they have grounds here land is such a important commodity so pricey that I guess people just want to make the best use of it but at the same time it makes houses here look like apartment buildings really yeah they don't look fancy per se not to mention the big walls but we know why those walls are there Look at that nice blue sky with some scattered clouds. By the way, if you haven't seen my other drive-in videos, do take a look. I try to capture most of Trinidad and um, I do it in a way that if you were in a truck with me, you know, you would see the same thing. I put the lens in a certain way where, you know, you get, you get, you get to see forward as well as the houses on to the left and the right. Try to make it as clear and crisp as possible. No shaking, um, moving. And when I can, I put some, you know, interesting facts commentary where possible in text format this is the first video where I actually talk as I'm driving I know not talking while I'm driving but you know after I've recorded this I come back and comment on it there's no way I could drive and do this much talking in this country when you're driving you really have to be concentrating on the road as you can see from my crazy driving videos, that's something else I do. I record all the crazy driving that I see. I mean, that's just me in the space of driving normally on the road. Accidents, people just being inconsiderate and so forth. If you haven't seen those crazy driving videos, do take a look. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell that notification bell next to the subscribe button is what informs you when I have a new video out if you don't if you just subscribe but you don't click on the notification button or bell um, YouTube may not let you know when I have a new video so it's important to click on that notification bell as well Also, let me know how you what you think about Westmoreans. Be sure on the areas that we're covering. If you're abroad and you used to live here, let me know if you find it's changed, if things look the same. What? So we're gonna turn right, and uh, I think there is one more road that we will turn right into again. And then we're going to go by the other side of Westmoreland, by the mall. But first I think we're going to turn right here. There's another road here on the left that I kind of neglected to go into. I mean, really, it will be really difficult to pick up all these roads. Huh? this alone is as you can see very time consuming just imagine driving all these places for hours i mean sometimes a uh, driving video may be an hour or two hours long but really you know sometimes i'm editing sometimes i might cut out something and it's much longer than that and in fact producing a video like this you know takes many hours 
that is if you want it done properly eh? I mean anybody could just record something and just start uploading it without a care of how it came out or whatever but I like to show my videos clear make sure that you know it's showing properly before I upload Oh, I'm surprised we're turning right. Okay, we. I'm. I think I missed a road here too. I'm not sure. Where am I going? This is West Morris by the sea. Maybe I'm gonna turn right here to pick up some of these townhouses. I did live here in these townhouses when I was a kid. Um, the ones on the right were occupied and the ones on the left were all empty like I said not a lot of people thought a lot of living in a place like this with townhouses but of course property I don't know when it really started to take off I think hmm close to 2000 um, maybe 1995 and above or more I think it was closer to 2000 properties just started to go ridiculously high and places like this they used to charge or still do charge in US dollars but sometimes I'm like for what you know that's the desperation of trying to find decent areas to live in Trinidad you have to pay a lot of money to simply live in peace as it were because if you I mean if you look at these townhouses there aren't anything special and when I say that they you know they're not fancy or um, some things you know they have lots of land and lots of trees and you know no it's not like that it's all compact very small very tight nothing fancy some people keep you know keep up with the townhouse keep it looking good others not so much but yet still all the people here uh, paid millions for the townhouse yeah millions or some of them have to pay rent in US that that I just don't get I know US is a commodity that's in high demand and again you want a, a decent place to live you have to pay regardless of how the house looks okay so I may be turning right here I think I did did I yeah I'm just trying to get all the inner roads for you before COVID uh, this was a great place for, for trick-or-treating those of you who do trick-or-treat with your children so lots of fun here with my boys getting their candy but they've passed that stage now and of course with the pandemic you know those things just don't happen anymore or well, at least I don't think they do if they still do let me know in the comments just out of curiosity So again you can see even though these are all townhouses a lot of them just still have a wall around it. it you know a lot of the times that reminds me of those British council estates it's a lot like that except the council estates in the UK are more 
drab looking with red brick. They aren't painted all fancy at least. In the largest council estate where I used to be in Manchester. I believe I will be turning right, I believe so. And then we will go to the other side of West Moorings, which includes Westmore. And Westmore also has surrounding it um, some apartment buildings and houses. This is a really nice round the world. I like the trees, the way it's kept. I think there should be more of them in Trinidad to help with the traffic situation. So that's the Western Main Road. The cars going left to right, and here we are going to turn right. We'll be facing east, and that will take us to Westmore and that area. We're not going to actually go in into Westmore. People are freakish about recording. You know the funny thing is. If people have their regular mobile phones and they're recording, nobody has an issue. But the moment they see a GoPro or a camcorder or something, everybody just freaks out. I don't understand it. Same recording. Okay, so if you have not seen it before, this road traffic system a lot takes you to West Mall. That mountain in the back there, that's about the base of it, on, um, right above that white car in front of me, is Kokorit. Um, you can see. Uh, West Mall on the right by that super farm super farm if you don't know is like a big drugstore slash 7-eleven if you want to put it like that it's like a one-stop get whatever you need whether you need food medicine makeup you know, it has all those things. Quite handy, although it can be quite expensive too. But I'm not reviewing them, I'm going into Westmorans. So, we are passing um, the Guardian Life building on the left there. That a bit of a Spanish court on the right, and um, we're going to see what it's like in this area. Again, all here used to be accessible. You could see the ocean, but that's not the case anymore. Check that nice bell tower, Spanish look. Yep, um, so you may see some Christmas decorations here and there. I think I took this in late December, but you know, it, this is how it looks now in 2020. So. I can promise you nothing has changed in a week.
and if you haven't noticed yet you can see that hardly anybody's around and when I say hardly anybody's around you know there aren't people everywhere noisemakers whatever like I said it's a nice peaceful place those apartment buildings something new to me yes I've seen them before but I have never really come this close to them sadly again blocking the ocean in the background actually when I was a kid this was all ocean so all this land here is filled land and um, I believe it's the local scientists predicted that if there was a major earthquake near this part of Trinidad that it would greatly affect all the buildings around here because it's filled on I'm not sure what period of time land needs to fill land needs to settle and bind to such a degree that it isn't considered a earthquake threat So what do you think? Beautiful houses, looks plain, looks nice. How would you describe it? Make sure to tell me in the comments. That road on the right that we're passing doesn't take it too much. You don't see much, so kind of skipping it. This one too. There's just probably little cul-de-sacs. By the time I drive in, I'll have to turn around, so it doesn't really make sense. So right now we're in the back of West Mall, or I should say the southern part of West Mall. Some towers to the right, that's West Mall to the left. I wonder what it's like to live in one of those apartments. They must have a really good view of the ocean. If anybody who lives in those apartments would like to offer me some time to come and capture by camera um, the view, send me a message. Uh, no, I'm not going to record your apartment or anything. I just want a view. The view must be tremendous to look at. And it could be any angle because I know so many apartments face north. So they only see or mostly see Diego Martin and Port of Spain or whatever. And, but the other side they see the ocean. So that's my small on the left. That big building on the right is Marcy used to be known as Hilo and that's a grocery one of Marcy's bigger groceries and here on the left there are people um, unfortunately asking for assistance that's something that has become more and more prevalent with the um, pandemic Not a lot, but you do see people with placards asking for assistance or help. This is the Western Main Road. I think it's, it's hard to turn around here. 
So I think I'm going to go back, turn left, and then turn back around. So you can see the other side as we exit Westmorans. Now there's some guys here, they're hustling to make some money. I've read the reports where the residents don't really care for that and I I have mixed feelings about it. So at the same time it's better that they, you know, try to do something than doing crime. But at the same time some of them can be pushy to the point of bully. I mean you should just ask and then move on but not insist or force people to give you money and and what's in kind of intimidating is so many of them again if you have comments about that let me know right here in my youtube channel i would love to hear what you think So we are waiting for this traffic light. I head over that traffic light into the middle of your screen. That is Dago Martin. And interestingly enough, besides the highway, I really have not gone into Dago Martin to um, record it. No pity valley. And the reason for that is because there are just so many roads I mean I could spend all day trying to pick up roads in Dago Martin and Pretty Valley especially Dago Martin and not get them all now on the left there the Chinese are working with a local construction company to build it up 